Kenosis, a devotional for the seasons of Advent and Christmas, produced by Northside Church. Tuesday, December 12th, Christ equal with God, reconciled world. Our scripture passage today comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 19. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. While the Advent and Christmas season might seem like the hardest time to think about saying no to various activities and obligations, it could also be the best time. Imagine how refreshing and rejuvenating it could be if we spent this season practicing a ministry of reconciliation. The gift of Jesus' life represents just that miracle. We are called to make room for God's reconciliation to us. And Advent, the season of preparation, is the perfect time to begin making room in our hearts for this gift. So today we're going to talk about reconciliation, Elizabeth, and uh, particularly how that... uh, how reconciliation is connected to the gift and miracle of Jesus's birth and how it's related to the kenosis and the emptying that we've been talking about. Um, let's start by asking you, uh, what does reconciliation mean to you? What does that even mean? I listened to Reverend Catherine's sermon on Sunday and it, it gave me kind of a new perspective on the idea of reconciliation. She shared this story, which I'm certainly going to botch, so go listen to her sermon, um, about this man who, he, he lived in this village where there was a lot of terrorism, and um, like he kind of went in knowing, or it got to a point where he knew that... Is it a true story? Yes, yeah, okay. as far as I know. Yeah. Um, uh, kind of knowing that his life was in danger. It got to that certain point, and uh, he, so he started, he, he wrote this letter where he talked about... Um, you know, what it means for him for this to be the end. And something that he said in, in this letter that his, he wrote the letter to his mother and his mother eventually published it, um, that, you know, I, I, I look in the face of you, my last minute friend, and he was talking about the person who would eventually kill him because he knew wow. it was coming. And he said, I, whoever you may be, my last minute friend, I look into your face and I see in you God's face. And I pray to God for the strength to forgive you and for us both to share together in the joys of heaven. And again, go back and listen to it because it was much more poignant than that. But, I, you know, so to to not only. You know, I mean, that in itself, right, to think about forgiving, forgiving another human being for such a crime. Right. But a crime against yourself and then to be able to have such a posture of reconciliation at the end of your life that you're thinking about that. Right. This hasn't even happened yet. And it did. It happened. That's what happened to him. A man. Yeah. Like he, he was murdered. Wow. And so I don't know. It's just that it just puts it put a whole new meaning for me when it meant to be reconciled. Right. And I, yeah. that line where, you know, t- to realize or just see the face of God in someone who is hurting you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. That's. Uh, I mean, and I think in a, in a deep sense that that's that's exactly what we're talking about with this kenosis whole theme of kenosis, right? This ability to empty yourself, um, and care about the interests of others above yourself, value others above yourself. That's certainly a moment where uh, that's that's true in all reconciliation. Uh, in order to reconcile that, that has to happen to some degree. But in that kind of radical, like. Uh, unimaginable really moment to be able to say you know that I see God in you that takes a a, that that can only happen if you've emptied yourself like if you've you've gotten out of the way of being able to do that yeah to bring about that kind of reconciliation yeah I mean, it's it's the moment on the cross, you know. I know we're supposed to be talking about Jesus being born, you know, but it's, it's connected. It's, I, I, the point is that the, it's all connected, yeah, right? Definitely, and, right? And so here you have this human being, fully human, fully divine being, that is asking God for forgiveness for the people that are killing him. Yeah. Well, mm. and, and Paul echoes that as well when he says things like, um, "While we were still sinners, Christ died for us," uh, and this whole idea. I mean, the whole idea of what's happening with God becoming human being. It's it's to be in a relationship with us for sure. But part of that is the reconciliation peace that's happening between us and God through Jesus Christ. 
when we think about reconciliation, generally we we think about it in terms of if if I you know if I just punch you in the face, right? Uh, I've wronged you, uh, and so for reconciliation to happen, uh, generally we think of it as I have to come to you and say, hey. I'm really sorry. I didn't like how you were talking about the Dallas Cowboys and it got me really fired up. And now, you know, now I know that I was wrong. That's me uh, cracking jokes about the Dallas Cowboys. Let us let us uh reconcile. But yeah. as the person who was the offender, I reach out and I make reconciliation. What we see in the activity of God in Kenosis as well as on the cross is that it's God, the one who was offended, that reaches out to make reconciliation. That would be like you coming to me and saying, Hey, I know you, you know, offended me or you hurt me. Now let me reconcile this. And that doesn't happen. Like that that kind of radical way of thinking about reconciliation means that that you truly would have to empty yourself. Like this is about me. Like you're taking mm-hmm. you're taking the the va- you're valuing the person who offended you more than you're valuing yourself, your own pride right. and place. Yeah. It's exactly what God is doing in kenosis, in the cross. Uh, and what, what we are called to do. So that kind of, that, I mean, that, it seems like it's impossible, but that's exactly what, what we see modeled for us. Yeah. Well, and I mean, it's a silly example, but I think it works, you know, because in that, in, in the moment that you're talking about, it's, it's me having to get over the fact that you punched me in the face and it hurt, right? (laughs) That was terrible. And we have a broken relationship and I have to move past that. And I have to see that what I said offended you. Right. And yeah. I, th- I think I think that's part of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe it, so. Is me saying like, oh, OK, I did something. Of course, this is, you know, getting a little bit farther away from the God thing because right. God didn't do anything wrong. But for us as humans. Yeah. You know, it, it's me saying, OK, seeing where I'm culpable in the situation. Right. Yeah. Well. You know, what did I do to and I you know this is not another it's like a stumbling block conversation. Yeah. Right. That scripture. Yeah. Right. What did I do? to cause you to punch me right. and it's not to say that you punching me is my fault i don't we're not going down that road right, right but it's you know okay if we are going to attempt to be in a healthy relationship moving forward right what did i do that created well it was just as exactly. part of the situation that created that atmosphere right and i think that's healthy and good but like you said like that's not what we see in kenosis is god didn't do anything wrong right, right. and that's even <laughs> right that's even more that's radical. A whole situation right and it, since it reminds me of um, of what we uh, we talked about in Sunday school this week, uh, we kind of walked through all the passages that we'll be looking at this week. And one of the passages this week on Friday is uh, a passage that's actually um, way more common to talk about during the season of Lent, which is Jesus washing his disciples' feet at the Last Supper. You never hear anybody talk about that during the season of Advent. Uh, and probably rightly so, but it connects deeply with what we're talking about here because Jesus kneels down, becomes a, a servant, washes his disciples' feet and says, you know, like, this is what I want you guys to be doing. But one of the people's feet he washes is Judas's. And Judas has already had in mind what he was going to do as far as betraying him. So having knowing that Judas was going to betray him, Jesus still knelt down in front of him and washed his feet. I, that moment between him and Judas, where both of them know exactly what's going on and nobody else does. It's just them, right? Judas maybe doesn't know that Jesus knows, but Judas knows he knows, right? Judas knows what he's about to do. Right. What would that have been like? You know, but that is exactly what we're talking about here in the sense that you being willing to serve and being willing to to become a slave and, and serve the one who has offended you, who has hurt you, in a way that's not like empowering them, right. but a way that, that is exposing them, you know, and, yes. and hopefully, and hopefully, hopefully God using that moment as a transformative grace moment where, right. where something speaks. That didn't happen for Judas, uh, unfortunately, but I think in a lot of moments it does, you know, how do you, how do you truly diffuse a situation and, and have real reconciliation? I think maybe emptying yourself, humbling yourself. In setting aside pride and and all of that is the only way to truly do that, and that's the ministry, according to Paul here in the passage that we read today. That's what brings about new creation. Yeah, that's what brings about new creation. That is the message of reconciliation that we have been given as the church. Amen. Oh well, that's something to think about. Uh, yeah, this week as we're thinking about reconciliation and and again continuing on our reflections for kenosis. Yeah, go listen to Reverend Catherine's sermon. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Peace.